Hey everyone, it's Mark from Brave Auto International in Japan. Today I'm sitting in a 1999 Toyota Hilux Surf SSRX. Um, this is the V6 3.4 litre petrol model. Um, automatic, done 75,000 kilometres. It's in white and grey two tone. Um, it's got blue or grey, sorry, um, cloth and trim, but it's got um, fitted black leather seat covers over them. So, I don't know if you've seen the other video of walk around with the vehicle, but that they aren't leather seats, they're actually imitation covers. Um, this is the later model, which has the, or well, the facelift, which has the different air con control. Um, they are a um, two-wheel drive, and you can select four-wheel drive with them. Um, they're not like the Toyota Land Cruiser where they're a permanent four-wheel drive. Uh, this one's got aftermarket alloys on it, 16-inch with big chunky tyres. And it's got about a, maybe a five-inch body lift as well, an aftermarket suspension. So it sits up really high and it's got an aftermarket front grille. So it's been bought out of auction for a customer in, the U uh, in Canada. And I'm um, just about to take for a road test, so I thought I'd bring you along. Uh, the aircon works because I had it going before when I was taking the photos. Out of all your um, Japanese SUVs, the Hilux Surf would be my. Um, would be my favourite of them all. I think it's, they're really nice looking, even though they're, you know, they're 15 odd years, 15 to 20 years old now, but they still look really nice. Uh, you can get a three litre TD model. Um, they go really well. Um, a little bit noisier, that's the only thing. Um, the petrol ones are quite quiet. Uh, with your, your surfs, especially this is probably more for US importers because they will be um, looking at them shortly, if not already. They didn't, er, the earlier model had a 2.4 turbo diesel and um, my advice to anyone in the USA who's thinking about buying or importing one of them or any, any 2.4 TD Toyota motor, okay, so if it's in one of the vans or, or whatever, but obviously the surfs have them. They are, you're guaranteed you'll need to replace the head on, on the vehicle at, at some stage. And you'll continue having to do that as time goes on with them. And what it was, it was a, a design fault with them, where they put too much heat off the manifold back into the head and they crack the heads all the time. So in, in Japan, because the, a lot of the driving's not continuous at, you know, 100 k's for whatever, half an hour, an hour, or whatever, you know, there are some places, obviously. But in Western countries, there's a lot of places where you can, um, you know, there's long motorways and some of the speed limits are high. And what happens is, is you're, you're putting too much heat into the head. So you can buy a Hilux Surf 2.4 here in Japan, do a leak down test on it, the head will come up as it'll come up as clear, import it, and then six months later, crack the head. And it's not just with obviously ones that go to Canada or they're gonna to go to the US. This has been going on for years, especially with New Zealand, uh, Australia, some to the UK. So if you what you want to do is Google um, something about it and you, you'll read up about them. So my advice to you, stay clear of them because they will cost you money and guarantee it. You're better off waiting two years or three years and getting the um, three litre TD model which came out in uh, mid-ish to late 93. They redesigned the head on them 
for the three litre ones. So normally what the guys do, when they crack the head in the 2.4, they'll actually put a three litre head on them um, to try and um, you know, stop it from continuously happening. So anyway, there's some free information for you. If you've got any questions, just email me and ask me. And you know, I'm not an expert on them, but I've been around them for a while, you could say. So I've seen all the problems that come up. Um, this drives, yeah, it drives nice. It, it's a little bit, um, feels a little bit like a whale on the road, you know, like it's just because of the body lift and that. Um, I've just jumped out of a, um, a Mercedes, which is really nice and tight. So when you jump into this, it just sort of feels a bit loose. And so you sort of get a bit uh, used to it. So under the road test, what I'm doing is I'm just checking to make sure the gearbox is right. Um, the vehicle's not overheating. Um, brakes are working and just general road test. So I'm just going to give it a bit of... a bit of load which these aren't super quick but and it's gonna give it a brake test which is good if it was me I would change the shocks in it and put some adjustable damper type ones the aftermarket ones that are in it aren't adjustable they're just a fixed setting I'd want to stiffen it up a little bit and it will um, it'll stop the body roll it's got well, well it, will, it will reduce it but also what it does is um, when you're going along you feel like you're going like this all the time moving around a bit and that's just because of the suspension and the lift but if it was just a bit harder on the dampers see you just feel it then you know so you may get used to it and think it's brilliant but like I say for me just jumping out of something else into this I notice it straight away um, I'm just gonna run it up the gears manually down here because this is a um, all-wheel well four-wheel drive which you can select obviously four-wheel drive in it I need to test the four-wheel drive so lucky for me I know where all the places are I'm getting used to the suspension in it now it actually doesn't yeah it probably doesn't bother me that much now You might think all the roads around here are narrow, they're not just some of the roads that I go down tend to be. Okay. I don't like putting, even though they can be put into four wheel drive on tarmac, I don't like doing it. So I always come to this piece here to test. Um, so got a button on the side of the get the lever here push that you can hear it click and it's lighting up on the dash it's blinking telling me to go forward well not telling me to go forward but if i go forward it then engages so i've got uh four wheel drive low four wheel drive high then you have neutral and then you have center diff lock so i just um right See, it's in foil drive now. And all I'm doing is I'm just making sure it's correctly, no noises or anything. And to see if any of the lights start flashing. So what I'm gonna do now is put it into, okay, now I'm in four wheel drive with the center diff locked on. So I'm just gonna go back which is now engaged and all and it's in a lower range as well
It's always important with these to make sure that the four-wheel drive's working in reverse and not bouncing, uh, not um, causing problems. Yeah, see, I can feel it's really tight turning. Yep. And this is a good way to make sure that the four-wheel drive's working. Okay. So what I do is I put it back in the park and I'll allow you to bring the lever out. Okay, button off for the four-wheel drive. Just go forward and sh should unengage. Probably not long enough. Just go back a bit. Okay, let's go forward. Now it's unengaged. Okay, so that's the four wheel drive, perfect. big feet on it, it doesn't um, quite surprise it's not sort of pulling to, to one side. I can take my hands off the steering wheel and jam the brakes on it, just carries on going straight. Nice Pajero. Okay, so that's your 99, 1999 Hilux Surf 3.6, sorry, 3.4 V6. Uh, I'll just give you a quick tour around it. So that's your Surf. Looks nice with the lift on it and the aftermarket alloys. This customer's going to really like it, I think. The aftermarket front grille. We've got an aftermarket skid plate under there. Okay guys, thank you, I'll move on to the next.